We are now going to look at the phases of the moon. In our diagram below, the yellow arrows represent sunlight coming in. So that means that the sun is to the right in this image. Notice that the earth and the moon all are illuminated on the right hand side and all are in darkness on the left hand side. The moon is shown in eight positions in its orbit around the earth. It takes the moon a total of 29.5 days to orbit once around the earth. So the distance that the moon travels in one day is a relatively small distance. For example, starting at new moon, new moon would last for one day of that 29 and a half days. The next day we would see the moon a little bit farther. Next day a little bit farther. And so on. until we reach first quarter. From the time of new moon to first quarter, roughly seven days of travel time to get one-fourth of its way around the Earth. During that time, it is in the waxing crescent phase. Similarly, from first quarter to full, first quarter lasts for one day, and then roughly seven days of motion to bring it to full moon. During those seven days it is waxing gibbous. Full moon will last for one day and then roughly another seven days of orbiting takes it to third quarter. And during those seven days it is a waning gibbous each of those days. Third quarter will last for one day and will again take approximately a week to then return to the new phase so that intervening time is a waning crescent for each of those days. Now what we see from the Earth depends on what is facing towards us. So for example starting with new moon if we draw a line perpendicular to the earth through the center of the moon and block off the part facing away from the earth we see that all of the dark part of the moon faces towards the earth so during new moon facing the earth is the dark side of the moon which we'll represent as a circle colored in when we go to waxing crescent Again, draw a line through the center of the moon, more or less. Block off the part facing away from the Earth. And we see that facing towards Earth, we have both dark and light. But the lit portion of the moon is less than half. So from our perspective, we will see less than half of the moon illuminated. And notice that it is on the right-hand side. So we will see the moon with the right hand side illuminated and the left hand side in darkness. And that is the shape of a waxing crescent. First quarter, draw a line through the middle, block off the part facing away, and we see half dark and half illuminated where the illuminated portion is on the right hand side. Waxing gibbous, draw in our line, block off the part facing away, and now we see that more than half illuminated is facing towards us, still on the right hand side. So it's going to be a gibbous phase. Now waxing crescent and waxing gibbous, the word waxing means getting bigger. So from new moon through waxing crescent, through first quarter, through waxing gibbous, all the way up to full, this whole portion of the moon's orbit, the amount of illumination is going to increase. And 
during this entire time, it is the right-hand side of the moon that is illuminated. Now we're at full moon. Draw our line through the middle, block the part facing away, and we see that half that is in light is facing towards us. We do not see any of the dark portion of the moon, and so full moon, we are seeing all of the moon illuminated. Now you may wonder if the sun is on the right hand side and the earth is between the moon and the sun, why the moon is illuminated. That is because the orbit of the moon is actually tilted. So that when it is, when it is in the full position, it's either slightly above the earth or slightly below the earth so that the earth is not casting a shadow on it. But on this illustration I can't show that because I don't have a way of drawing up out of the screen or down into the screen. When we go past full, our orientation changes from our observer being on top of the earth, so to speak, for example, up here at the 6 p.m. position. Now our observer is down below. And one of the things that's going to happen is for our observer on top, our right hand side is as we are looking at the screen to the right. For our observer down below, our right and left are going to be reversed because we flipped upside down. And that's going to affect which side of the moon we see illuminated. So when we get to waxing gibbous here, and we draw a line through the middle and block out the part facing away from the earth, we again see more lit than in darkness, but from our observer's point of view, the part that's lit is on the left hand side. So we're going to shade in a little portion of the right hand side, but it's mostly lit on the left hand side. So that's a reverse of what we saw with the waxing gibbous, now our waning gibbous is flipped. Same thing for third quarter relative to first quarter. If we shade in the part facing away from us, we're half lit, half in darkness, but it's now the left hand side that is illuminated and the right hand side that is in darkness. So again, the reverse of first quarter. Waxing crescent, shade in the part facing away, less than half illuminated, but it's now the left hand side where it's illuminated and the right hand side that is in darkness. The reverse of what we saw with waxing crescent. Waning means wasting away or getting smaller. So from full moon through waning gibbous through third quarter waning crescent all the way back to new the moon is going to get smaller each night, but now we're going to see the left-hand side of the moon illuminated. The other thing we can see in this diagram are the local times on Earth. And recall, noon is the side of the Earth facing towards the sun, and our sun is over here someplace, putting out all the rays of light, not to scale. And midnight is facing away from the sun and earth rotating counterclockwise. Now, before we look just at six hour intervals, this is showing three hour intervals. So every 45 degree rotation is three hours later from noon to 3 p.m., 6 p.m., 9 p.m., midnight, 3 a.m., 6 a.m., and 9 a.m. And again, we can use this for overhead times. So, new moon, overhead at noon. The midpoint for waxing crescent is overhead at 3 p.m. First quarter, overhead at 6 p.m. Waxing gibbous, overhead at 9 p.m. Full moon, overhead at midnight. Waning gibbous, overhead at 3 a.m. Third quarter, 
overhead at 6 a.m., and the midpoint for waning crescent overhead at 9 a.m. And the rise and set time rules are still the same. It's going to rise six hours prior to the overhead time, set six hours after the overhead time. So for example, waning gibbous is overhead at 3 a.m. It's going to rise at 9 p.m., set at 9 a.m. And the same rule applies for all the others.